Just tell me what happened next. Look. I don't know. It's fuzzy. You went off your medication. Wake up. Why? Uh, we're just looking for the truth. Which you promised to tell. I told you they took her. Sydney Barrett, the girl who disappeared. She didn't disappear. She took my place, and I took hers. Wait, what? It was her power, I, I, I think. Can you explain that? So was he crazy, or...? Continue. He believes he's mentally ill. But he may be the most powerful mutant we have ever encountered. Can we take a break? Please? Of course. Let's take a break. Uh, stop. We can skip that part. Unless you think it's relevant to... No. I mean, we don't have to. Okay. Let's talk about it. Look at me. I, I know what I am. What's that? You kissed the girl. She took my place and I took hers. Uh, stop. Would you say that again? Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So batshit crazy Legion trailer, let's break it down. So a lot of you are asking, is this set or is it connected to the X-Men films that Fox has? And Brian Singer, like different people have said different things, but Brian Singer has since come out and said, yes, it is connected, but it's not going to be like a Marvel situation where they're directly referencing everything that's going on in the movies and everything that's going on in the TV show at the same time, but it is supposed to be connected. If you don't know who the Legion character is, Legion is the name of the character. The series name Legion is after the character's name. It's not the name of a team. So the whole pitch is that Chris Claremont created him in the 80s. He was part of the big Chris Claremont run in the X-Men comics. Some of the best, if not all the best X-Men stories come from him. So the whole pitch of the character is, is that, you know, what if Professor X, one of the most powerful mutants on the planet, had a son who was even more powerful but he was completely crazy, what would happen? So this Legion character is born and he has like this infinite capacity for good or evil and he has multiple personalities, each of them possessing a different mutant power. So he's basically like this Omega level mutant, like on the level of Apocalypse or Franklin Richards or even Jean Grey, you know, maybe not quite as powerful as the Phoenix, but you get the idea. Like he's one of the most powerful mutants on the planet, but because he has so many different personalities, you have no idea who you're dealing with. Not all of the personalities are good people. Some of them are villains. Some of them are really big heroes. So the idea, like Chris Claremont was talking about how like people back in the 80s were like, hey, you know, you should put him on like the X-Men team. Like he should team up with some other people. And you kind of get this from the trailer. Like he said he would just laugh and be like, look, this dude does not belong outside of a psychiatric facility. There's no way that any team would want to have him. Like Wolverine would just flip his shit if he found out that someone this crazy was on his team. So in the more recent comics, they have ways of dealing with those, like, you know, ways of eliminating those other personalities, kind of winnowing it down to a place where he can actually exist with other people. He can be social. So if you don't read comics, like right now in the X-Men comics at Marvel, things are going completely crazy. It's almost like Marvel is killing off the X-Men. They're really engineering like a big rebirth, like it's happening at DC. Like they're kind of reinvigorating the characters. But before you can have a renaissance, you have to have the Dark Ages. So like they're slowly killing off all the X-Men right now. So it seems like a complete shitstorm if you don't know what's coming. Marvel isn't trying to kill off the X-Men. They definitely want to see some collaboration with the Fox X-Men universe in the movies. And that just takes time. So back to the TV show, you see Aubrey Plaza here, obviously like one of the people who seems so crazy that she might be saying, like the whole idea with this character here is that he's completely crazy, but you know, but what if 
he were the sane one and everybody else was crazy, like one flew over the cuckoo's nest, or like Brad Pitt's character during 12 Monkeys, the guy that Bruce Willis runs into in the insane asylum, who ends up being this prophet that kind of engineering this self-fulfilling prophecy. So like sometimes the people in the comics that seem crazy that you run into are really the sane people that are trying to tell you the truth everybody else are the real crazy people so i think that's going to be the twist of the series here so like you run into aubrey plaza who just has like this sixth sense about her who just senses something different about the legion character who befriends him so they're gonna have some fun adventures inside this asylum i would be willing to bet one of the villains of the pilot is going to be this person called major perdition so in this tv universe the government knows about mutants so usually when you have situations like that with omega level mutants the government or like some entity tries to co-opt them to use them for their purposes which are usually really bad so we don't really know much about the plot of the series if it's going to follow any comic book arcs but you can see from the trailer he switches places with this female character he does that on purpose, as crazy as it seems. So the trailer jumps around a lot through his life. Like you see flashes back, you know, as he's having this hallucinatory dream where all of his different powers are activating with these different personalities. I'll be interested to see how they explain that through the series, but it looks like it's just gonna be completely crazy, which I totally love. Cable shows have a little bit easier time with that. Usually when you hear about a new superhero series, you really want it to go to cable so they can just play with a little bit more. They don't have to be quite as boring as it is when it goes to like a big network. But you see flashes of his family in here. He keeps talking about the Sidney Barrett character that he was trying to rescue. Like, oh, she didn't disappear. We switched places. Maybe it was her power. So you have like a mixture of like the rogue character from the Brian Singer X-Men movies who has this alienated feeling because she keeps taking people's power. Like she can't touch people or else she'll like zap their life force, steal their powers. So a little bit of the fun of the series is going to be like making our way through this fever dream that is his brain, all of these different personalities, seeing the really cool big action set pieces as like his powers activate. Like think about all the different powers you see in an X-Men movie, like all the different characters' powers. He pretty much has access to all of those. Like he has so many different personalities that he almost has every single power, but it's not completely infinite. And then you have situations, like I said earlier, where characters come in and start killing off the other personalities so he loses those abilities. So it's just like a way to keep it under control. Like you can't have limitless abilities, otherwise it'd just be ridiculous. But let me know what you guys think about the look of this series so far. Keep in mind the age of the character here. So like if he's Professor X's son in the comics, we're really talking about Patrick Stewart's Professor X, just because he's like a middle-aged man, so Professor X would be much older in this so some of you in related X-Men movie news know that the Wolverine movie just finished shooting. Patrick Stewart guest stars in that with Hugh Jackman, who's playing like a version of old man Logan. So you have all these X-Men movies taking place at Fox. The main movies are kind of in the 90s because Sophie Turner's Jean Grey character hasn't become the Phoenix yet. That's kind of what they're getting ready for in the next movie. Then you have the Wolverine movies, which are like way further in the future doing old man Logan stuff. And then you have the TV shows, which are kind of taking place in between all that stuff. But it seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll at least do a video for the first episode, but it's not premiering till early 2017, so it's still a ways off. So just let me know what you guys think of it so far, and if you've ever read a comic book story with the Legion character. Really, he's not that big of a character for how powerful he is. He's not like Wolverine, he's not like Jean Grey, he's not like Cyclops, he's not like one of the main X-Men. So it should be a lot of fun. And I'm a big fan of Aubrey Plaza. I just love how crazy she is in this trailer. Usually her best performances are when she gets to be just batshit crazy. So in related Marvel news, later tonight I'm going to be doing an Avengers Infinity War Thanos video. They just started to shoot the movie. So Purple Man has left the chair. Repeat, Purple Man has left the chair. It is on. Shit is going down. So be sure to subscribe to get that. That should post later tonight. While you guys wait for that to post, you can click here for the Flash trailer that I just posted, and you can click here to learn a little bit more about the Infinity Gauntlet and the actual gems in the gauntlet. So thank you so much for watching. Everybody, let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.